Why does it matter the context of the scripture? Why is it so important, especially when we're listening to an online sermon, which so many of us are doing these days? How does it affect us? Well, we're going to look into that through a review of some clips that I have of Alexander Pajani. <laughs> if you don't know, yes, he is a Bronx Pentecostal pastor who can be on the entertaining side. And, well, you'll see. His topic, well, let's just dive into the clip and I'll comment uh, on the relevant portion. Today, I want to talk to you about the weapon of mass destruction called discernment. The weapon of mass destruction called what? Discernment. Called discernment. Say it with me, discernment. discernment. Now, let me say this. Discernment is not the same as street smarts. Street smarts is not discernment, it's perception. See? The world calls it wittiness. In the street, we call it street what? Street smarts. I know how to navigate myself uh, as I walk this earth, right? That doesn't necessarily mean you have discernment. You just have perception based on how long you've been living in that area. Based on, so your perception grows. Watch this. Your perception grows based on the things you go through. If you don't know, Alexander Pajani uh, lives up in Bronx, New York. And that is a very rough area. I did a Google map. Street view, and yeah, it's not something you want to walk in uh, blind. <laughs> He's also had a lot of tough time. He's 50 years old, and so, yes, that's why he talks as he does. And like I said, there's also a need to talk this way. That's his audio. Now, I hope you caught some salient points. We like to say, oh, the same, the same thing as street smart, as I correctly pointed out. No, it's not. <laughs> you can have some street smart, but that doesn't mean discernment. Discernment is insight that the Lord gives you and speaks to your spirit that's revealed to yours and to your mind what you uh, don't know. And sometimes it does require you listen and it's also humility. <laughs> and it's also quite, well, I'm going to share a scene. <laughs> so comical, I think you'll make a point. <laughs> uh, and we will get into the scriptural context. But you need this to see the context for which he's dealing with and why he communicates as he does. Discernment in the Hebrew, look up the screen, is the word nakar. And it means to regard. Look at this. It means to what? It's the next word. Recognize. It means also to what? Acknowledge. Watch this. I like the next couple of words. Discernment in the Hebrew, the word nakar also means to distinguish. See? Some of us acknowledge, some of us regard, some of us recognize, but the distinguishing part, we have a hard time. We have a hard time. Let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. Something tells you this person, stay away from them, but you don't know what that is because on the surface, they're your friend. They miss what I just said, but something in your spirit goes, uh, cringe. That is God trying to help you distinguish. Why? Watch this. Because the word anguish is in there. What is anguish? Cringe. Believe it or not, Alex is actually correct on the Hebrew word he was using. It's strong number 995. Uh, I honestly wish he had the, uh, the thing right there where it was visible on the screen. But yeah. And there's something else I wanted to comment. <laughs> Did you catch that last one? Distinguish? Uh, he is technically correct. Because the sermon does. Because I've had situations where I have cringe. And I have to go like, 
okay, does this sound like, like an anguish in my soul? So yes, and it comes in handy when it comes to people uh, who <laughs> don't quite handle the scripture right. Mm -hmm. Yes, you're going to get what you were waiting for in the next clip. And then we'll really talk. But I'm not afraid to give out credit when he's right. Job chapter 4, verse 16. How many of you remember the story of Job? Yes. Right? This little part right here is sandwiched in chapter 4, which is not too far off after his trial started. Look at this. A demon showed up to Job, but he couldn't distinguish it. He didn't know what it was. Watch this. This truth was given to me in secret. This is Job talking about something that happened to him at three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Who am I talking? La, 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 la. Watch this, watch this. Job chapter four, verse 16. So Job went to sleep because going to bed early was a normal Jewish custom. Yeah. It's not a Gentile custom, a Jewish custom, right? Because they understand the power of Sabbath daily and the power of God speaking to them in dreams. So at 3 o'clock in the morning, this is what happens. This truth was given to me in secret, rather private. As though whispered where? In my ear. It came to me in a disturbing vision at night, which means he had a nightmare. Watch this. When people are in what? Oh, so watch this. So when I hear people say, oh, there's no such thing as witches tackling at 3 o'clock in the morning. You guys are exaggerating. No, the witches know that in this time, most Christians are in deep sleep. And if you're in deep sleep, we can work the most. Watch this. Deep sleep. Fear gripped me. And my bones trembled. Then a what? Then a spirit passed before my face. The hair of my flesh stood up. It stood still. But look at what he said. But I could not, what? I could not discern. I could not discern the form. An image was before my eyes. There was a silence and I heard a voice saying, if you finish reading the chapter, it's too long for me to put on the screen. The spirit starts dialoguing with him. Now watch this. If you don't know your Bible in real life, you will think an experience like this is coming from God, the Holy Spirit. And it is a demon. It is a demon, a seducing spirit talking to you. Why? Because if you don't know how God speaks, anything supernatural to you is God. Okay. Here's why I was cringing. And I hope you caught the facial reaction where it said, No, it was not Job. <laughs> Why does context matter, especially when we're studying the scripture or listening to a sermon? Here's why. Number one, yes, the book is really written by uh, Job or someone who knew the story. That's number one. Job is not the talker. It's the person speaking in this uh, section. And we're going to go over some of this in just uh, a bit. But that's important. Who's talking here? Why? It's one of Job's comforters. Uh, and his name is Eli Faz, if I got the name correct. And he was claiming, oh, the innocent people don't suffer. Really? No, innocent people do suffer. He's basing his logic when he goes after Job on the idea, well, if you're suffering, you must have did something. Ugh, I'd love to have a chat with this guy. Now, how do I know that this is false other than personal reaction? Because at the end, when God shows up, the Lord says, uh, not one of your friends said anything, especially your life says, said what was right. So I can treat this guy as as suspect and not rely. Job was the only one speaking right. So this could not have been Job speaking. I really wish uh, Alex had gotten that part right. Uh, Two, there's another reason. This is part of a genre of literature called wisdom literature. And they used a lot of imagery and, and symbolism 
to reflect what the author is communicating. So, yes, you had to keep these things in mind when you read Job. Plus, yes, Job was going through a whole bunch of trials. Let's see, he lost, I believe, seven of his, all his children, seven of them. He lost all the herds and wealth, all that. And now, he's suffering from a whole bunch of boils and such that's afflicting his body. Ay, yeah, yeah, he is in serious depression. Eliphaz and his two friends showed up as comforters. Uh, it probably would have been better if they hadn't said anything, because <laughs> they were not anything but helpful, especially the two chief talkers. Like, and that what is what's going on, and that, and this is, I don't know what the heck of life it was talking about. Now, let's see, let's get down to verse 16. Eliphaz is talking about this. Apparently, it was the middle of the night, he's not sleeping so great, who knows what it is. And he says in that text, uh, it's, he t- said some kind, yes, in 15, said, then a spirit passed by my face. The hair of my flesh bristled like, whoa, what the heck? I'm going to guess a spirit showing up is not typical. Now, Alex is very much involved in deliverance ministry. I'll save that part for another day. Here's what's important. I feel like the Alec has a little too many demons on the brains uh, here and should have just stick with the text. So I can't blame him <laughs> on, on that. But uh, really, Alec, let's stick with the text. <laughs> Yike. Why is that important? because it sets up people on a rabbit trail. You're not sure what to do or how to discern. And we, and he is right. This is not something you uh, should be taking too seriously, uh, especially if you don't know what it is uh, that's going on. And yes, he is right, uh, though this text doesn't talk about that. Because of all the stuff that's going on at his church, he was trying to give a warning about distinguishing, okay, what's of God and what is not, and how. Uh, gee, if I am uh, didn't have fear and not, be like, okay, yes. And it was interesting, the message that did get said, and that is, it stood still, but I could not discern its appearance. It's hiding itself, so I don't know what the heck I'm looking at. <laughs> A form went before my eyes, and there was silence. <laughs> yeah, I can understand why he would have thought demonic. <laughs> then I heard a voice. Can mankind be just before God? Mm. See, this is why it's important to understand what kind of literature you're writing. Because I don't think a demonic spirit can be talking quite like this. <laughs> and giving these kind of riddles here. Because it really doesn't make sense when you think about it. Now let's hear me out. I don't care how well-intentioned a path there is. Even the best of them will uh, screw up from time to time. (laughs) And unfortunately, there's a trend of a lot of pastors who aren't uh, fully equipped as some of us would like. But keep in mind, our pastors are human beings, wonderfully flawed human beings who are trying. And like, that's why it's important that we learn how to read the scripture and handle it right 
so that we can get a better understanding of what the pastor was trying for. And I kind of caught what he was uh, going uh, for. It's just that, hello, um, you're creating a little confusion, bro. <laughs> Claiming it's one person when it's actually no, it's somebody else. <laughs> Can you see what's going on? I'm letting myself get distracted by all this stuff. And it's actually important to know who is talking and what message is being conveyed. That's why I showed you the subheaders for that chapter, chapter four. So you know, oh, this is someone else talking and told you what happened at the end of Job. That's why it's so important to read. In fact, I think I will definitely write up an article about showing how to... Okay, a lot of... I hate to use technical terms that the average person may not know, but you might have heard it that exegete the scripture. In other words, applying reading 101 to what we're reading in the word and getting the best understanding of what the text is saying so you can better interpret and also learn how it can apply to you. But it has to be in the context. There is a link to my blog, uh, my blog in the description. The, that article isn't out there yet, but you will find plenty of teaching stuff on there. I could do a video, but uh, my Bible teaching videos don't tend to do well. In fact, I got a, a fun chapter. It's the beginning of Acts chapter 10, I believe. You'll see. <laughs> hey, I want to thank you. Uh, let me know how the video uh, did with you and if you got anything. And hope to see you uh, when I see you. <laughs>